I didn't I didn't grab anything out of the room, didn't take anything from the locker room. Nothing. Didn't get nothing. a ball. Didn't get a ball. You wish you would have? Nah, not really. Not really. You know, you get so much some of the other, like the hats and t-shirts and all that kind of I mean a you know, a ball a ball probably would have been nice, but I did get that that helmet that they you know the that Super Bowl fifty two helmet. I have that. Um Do you wear it much? Yeah, <laughs> and then I'm gonna, you know, I uh, I'm gonna look into, you know, maybe maybe getting a replica trophy or something at the house and do something like that. But the yeah. ring, the ring will be. The ring will be a souvenir enough. Yeah. What's it been like walking around this week being uh, the Super Bowl winning coach? You know, it's it's something that is a little bit surreal. You know, you're you're walking amongst all your all your peers and. Um, you know, you got all the owners and GMs and head coaches here and presidents and everybody. And, um, you know, when you're outside of NovaCare, outside the building, that's when it makes it real special, you know, what, you, what you've accomplished and how hard it is to, to get there and, and to win that football game. And um, I appreciate everything, you know, that, that got us there, obviously. And then, and then to be here and, and to, uh, to be con- congratulated. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty. It's pretty cool. It's Doug, pretty how cool. do you how do you keep the chemistry? I mean, that was obviously phenomenal last year. Now, as a person, I don't know if you I don't know if you keep it as much as you 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 kind of re, rebuild it again. You know, um, our team will be different. You know, it's just the nature. There's uh, you can already you can already see with the with the moves that were made this spring with you know during free agency and um, <laughs> I, I think I think by maintaining you know, some of your core players um, in the locker room helps that. But I, but I think you have to you have to start kind of from ground ground zero again. You know, in, in April and 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 start talking about everything again. Just just you, you just kind of flush the system and and you know kind of retool it. So um, we have and, and 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 really do have a good locker room. Um, and, and so. You know that's going to be part of it this spring. It was different when you were when you won the Super Bowl. It was different then because now with the turnover, with you know money and everything. Yeah, you, you, you're not going to keep. You can't keep your, your your guys. It's just the way free agency is today, and there's there's a lot more money involved and in, in, uh, in the league, and um, that's why that's why it's you know change is good. You know we've talked about that in the past. Change is good and and. Um, you know, we just gotta. We're, we're kind of regrouping a little bit and trying to make another push. It does. You said the other day that Parker's ahead of schedule. What's the schedule for him? What's next for him? And in terms of the offseason program, what's that? You know, very encouraged where he's at, uh, the direction he's headed. Um, you know, it's, it's day by day. You know, I'm not 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 rushing him by no means. Um, you know, he's he, he's working extremely hard, obviously. Um, you know, trying to get himself ready to go, but but really no timetable. I'm not gonna uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna push him out there when he's when maybe if he's not ready. You know, much like we did with Sydney. You know, I don't want to rush him back. I want to make sure he's 100. percent But but just knowing Carson, he's gonna try to maybe get out there sooner. You know, sooner than later. But um, be smart with it. Make good decisions. And uh, but right now, I'm really encouraged. You know, in the direction he's headed. Are you gonna be able to do any individual work? You know, I don't. You know, probably not in the spring, um, just because it's too soon. Um, so I wouldn't expect any of that type of work in the in the spring. Well, you're not you're not allowed to talk to Michael Bennett now, are you? I mean, if you wanted to talk, let's say you wanted to talk to him. Uh, I no, I can't. It, we're in a, we're in a dark period. We're in that dark period. You know, we, we only talked to him when he when he came into the building. So that was the only time. What'd you learn about Carson during the end of the season, the playoff run, what he was doing behind the scenes that maybe you didn't know? Before? Such a team player, you know. I mean, he he's um, he, he became he became a great teammate to Nick, obviously, in, in helping him in, in preparation, just like Nick did with him. The roles reversed, obviously, at the end of the season, um, and and he became he, he became probably Nick's biggest fan, you know, down the stretch, and, and that was great to see him uh, in in the mix in the room, you know, uh, right there on the field uh, when he could get out there. Um, everything, everything that you wanted to see, we saw, you know, in Carson from a, 
from a, uh, a leadership standpoint, you know, down the stretch. You said Carson kind of wants to need to get out there as quickly as possible. Do you have to kind of guard him from himself, to make sure he doesn't push it? Yeah, I mean, you know, that and the, the medical team, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust those guys to, to make the, the right decision. But you, you guys know Carson. You know his demeanor. You know his, his mentality. He's he's aggressive, and he's going to want to – He's going to want to push the envelope a little bit, but um, we're going to again be smart with it. Um, I like where he's at, but but again, uh, I'm not going to not going to not going to push him. Going to hold him back and and, and make sure he's 100. So Foles will take all the first down, first team reps in the spring, and then Nate will be the, the second team guy. And yeah, I mean it'll be much like the end of the season, you know. Um, and Nick will Nick will come in, and, and this will be big for Nate. I mean, it'd be a great opportunity <laughs> for Nate to get a lot of reps this spring. Um, and I'm, I'm encouraged about that to work work with him and get him get him a ton of reps, get him kind of caught up in the offense, and and uh, and then also get Nick Nick some time. Obviously, there was a lot of talk about Cole's possibly being traded. As the coach, are you kind of happy to still have him? As that, oh, I'm excited to have him. I'm in, I'm ecstatic. I mean, anytime you don't have to disrupt that room and keep keep that room together, uh, it's a lot like my days in Green Bay. I mean, it was it was Favre and myself, and we always figured out who the third was going to be but right now I mean we got Nate so you know it's it's a great room great dynamic uh, I'm excited that uh, you know uh, we still have all three guys um, and and yeah it's a it's still a still a very good room. As a follow up to that with all due respect obviously to your career Nick is coming off a Super Bowl MVP. Yeah I wasn't a Super Bowl MVP. Yeah, so <laughs> is, is he going to be okay going back to being a backup quarterback? I think so I think I mean that's obviously probably a Nick question. Um, but I, I just kind of know Nick and his his mentality, and, and uh, I think he's fine with that. You know, I think he's fine. He understands it's Carson's team. Uh, he knew that last year, you know. Um, but he did embrace his role, obviously, and, and did it superbly. Um, but but moving forward, I think he, you know, I think he's going to be okay. What kind, of, what kind of role do you see for, for Michael as a wide receiver? Do you see him as kind of a speed guy that's running yeah, no, I, I see him very similar to that. Um, you know, uh, he, he's an excellent slant runner. Uh, he can, he's got speed to burn. Um, you know, the biggest thing now is just getting him in here and, and getting him caught up in the offense. But very similar role that that, that, that Tory had. Uh, I see, I see, I see Mike kind of filling that same that same spot. I see Matt Collins taking a step forward this year in terms of his. I do, I do. I, I really see him. You know, he's one of the young players that I'm encouraged to, to really. Uh, watch this spring, his development, you know, and, and uh, you know, it'll be a big, big off season for him. Obviously, his his uh, his role on special teams will still increase, but but as a receiver, um, it, it really gives us four guys right now. You know, if you had to go, which we did. I mean, at the end of the season, you had you had four or five guys that you could you could go play with, and that's that's great for any 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 offense, but. Um, yeah, Max. Max got a big, big spring ahead for him. It's, I'm looking forward to it. It's early, but uh, and it's early, but you know, two tight ends, three tight ends were a big part of your offense. Right. Um, you know, Selleck is gone. Burton's gone. Um, have you started even thinking about, you know, okay, what well, is the offense? The offense may look different with just you know, Zach and maybe another, you know, another guy. Or do you feel like uh, you're okay? With, I mean, are you okay with just you know Zach and well, another you, guy? You, no, I mean you're you're not okay. You know. We're always going to look to, to bring you know guys in to compete. That's that's always always the case. You know, um, you know we got the draft coming up. You know, you never know what's going to happen. Who knows? There, there might be another free agent out there that that we might target. But um, I, I, at some point, I want to get. And we got the guys. I mean, you know, Billy Brown, practice squad player. You know, we got Adam back. I mean, we got some guys now that we can, young guys that we can kind of get, get caught up and, and really get going this spring, second year for, for a couple of those players. And, um, you know, there, it's, a good, it's a good tight end draft. I mean, there's some, there's some good players in the draft this year. So we'll see where it ends up. But, but I'm comfortable if we can get three guys eventually going into the season. That's, that's kind of what I would like. Are you, are you, are you counting on Nate goes, um, you know, like Nick yeah, Nate, uh, or Nate? Uh, you know, what was saying before the Super Bowl, he felt for everything. So comfortable yeah. with him if he had to throw him into that game as he did with Nick, you know, before he went in uh, against L.A. And I think he felt the same way. Sorry, and now you're, you're right. Uh, in the system, would you expect him to do it? Yeah, you know, we, I tell you, um, Nate's one of those guys, I mean, he's a hard worker. You, you saw what he did in the Dallas game and, and, and 
the stats he put up in the game he had. I mean, it was unfortunate we didn't score, but um, that, that's encouraging, you know. And then he, he just got better. You, you, I know you didn't get a chance to watch him in practice, but the things we saw in practice um, really gave us a lot of confidence as a staff to, if he needed to go in, he could go in and, and, and you know, uh, sustain the role. And um, that's why this, this offseason, you know, is going to be big for him, get him, get him caught up in the, in the offense and uh, feel real comfortable with him. And, and uh, again, having, having three guys um, is, a, is a blessing, especially this, this early in the offseason program. Doug, what's it been like for you and for everybody to turn the page and kind of get caught up on the time that you missed during the Super Bowl? Um, you know, it, it's hard. It's hard to – the page is probably, like, almost turned, you know. Um, but but we know that we still have a job to do and we got to get ready for 2018. You know, I'm, I'm going to tell you, my my mentality when when we were a week – week removed from the Super Bowl was was let's get it as soon as we can let's get it behind us and let's let's move on to 2018 I mean that I, I, I was so ready to move on you know um, long season um, great accomplishment however let the players and you know try to enjoy it as much as you can but you know we got to focus on on the on the future and what's what's coming down the pipeline and and it's coming extremely fast you know we're a couple weeks from OTAs and you know from the offseason program and you know um, there's still a lot of work to do, you know, in the office. So um, we're, we're, we're flipping the page as fast as we can. But but at the same time, you know, it's, it's nice to kind of take take some time and reflect on, on, on what just happened. Uh, you're, speaking you're of, of, your, uh, of being a head coach, where do you, on a day-to-day -day basis, where do you think you grew the most as a head coach? Last year? Yeah. You know, I, I just think just leading the team through, through some of the adversity, um, you know, it, it kind of goes back to that that year one. You know, holding that holding those guys together a little bit when things could have unraveled. Um, guys are believing in me. I think is is, is uh, um, gives me a lot of confidence. You know, knowing that that you got the team right there where you want them, and um, they'll do anything for you. I, I think that's 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 part of you know being a good leader, uh, understanding that, and uh, feel real comfortable there. And, and so, those are I think for me that's. That's probably the, the, the most proud, you know, as a coach to be able to to lose the, the, the type of players we lost, especially your starting quarterback, and still be able to kind of hold everything together, get your backup quarterback ready to play, and, and, and ultimately win a championship. When did you when did you know they, they believed in you? When did you know that, that leadership was kind of taking the next step and that you didn't have to worry about still getting them on board convincing them? You know, I, I think – I think it's it was a process throughout the entire season, but but each week, each week that you know we we won a game, I tried to keep the focus on just the next game and not get any bigger in that, not 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 you know read the hype, positive or negatively, um, and just stay in the moment, you know, stay stay on on task this week, um, <clears throat> and that that grew every single week, and they believed in that, and you know you heard guys talk about it after games where. You know, we'd win a game and it was great, but hey, let's stay grounded, let's stay focused, and all the things that I sort of talked to the team about. And then, you know, when when I took the pads off at the end of the year and, and, and kind of slowed the tempo practice down a little bit, and then that bye week going into the postseason, they came to me and wanted the pads back on. So that that's that's a sign that you, you've kind of got your team right where you want them, um, and and. Uh, you know, but it, it was a process throughout the entire year. At cornerback, a lot of depth. Obviously. At corner? Yes, yes, corner. A lot of depth. Who do you see replacing Patrick as the slot? I mean, that's an area that we'll have to address this spring. Um, you know, we, we've got some guys that, whether it's whether it's Jalen Mills moving in there, whether it's you know Worley moving in there, um, whoever that might be. We got some young guys. You know, Bosby's on the outside, uh, DJ Killings, a couple young players there that can, can possibly move and work inside. So, you know, it, it'll, be, it'll be a little bit of an uh, opportunity, you know, for those guys to, to try to grab that spot and solidify that, that fifth DB spot. Is what about Jalen the, at the point where he can move inside and outside? You know, I think he's comfortable enough. Yeah, he, he understands. Plus, I think, you know, he's, 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 he's a versatile guy. If you ever need him to play a safety spot, I mean, he can go back. He's... He's that type of athlete, you know. He, he's positioned, uh, you know. He's not just one guy in one one position. I think he's versatile enough to now that we can be able to move him around a little bit. Um, 
you know, for a guy that was, was drafted where he was, you know, late, um, he's been a real, real big bright spot for us, you know, these first two years. Doug, Blunt's, Blunt's moved on, uh, you know, they want to have him back, and Sproles doesn't look like he'll be back either. Was, Who was the first guy you mentioned? Blunt. Blunt, got it. So, uh, do you feel comfortable with, uh, like, Wendell or um, Danell as kind of like that third guy? Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, that's another another area we'll look at. Um, you know, obviously the top two with Jay and Corey, and, and really, I, listen, I'm, I, I'm, I'm a big I, I like Wendell. I think I think it was just a situation where you know we brought in Jay and 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 you know Wendell was was the guy that we had to put down each week. But you know I'm I'm encouraged by Wendell. Um, I think he's he's got value to our football team. He brings special teams value. So you know I'm not I'm not not concerned there. But but uh, again another another good draft coming up. We'll see what happens. See where it falls out. Um, and try to add some depth and competition Doug, there too. Did Jeff just mention uh, Sproles? Have you shut the door on that, or is the team talking to him? No, I mean, you know, again, it's you know, we're he's a free agent, and, and it's it's hard to have conversations with him in the off season like this. But um, well, you know, is the team I, is the team has the team wanted has the team talked to him? I mean, how? Is yeah, it? I mean, yeah, we've reached out to him, you know, during the free agency period, and, and talked to him, and and listen, I, I'm guys like that. You know, um, he's expressed he wants to be back here. He knows we want him back here. You, you know, yeah, heck yeah. You know, uh, he's a big, he's a big part of our team. You know, punt returner. You know, he's a, he was a tremendous back, third down guy. Um, yeah, so we'll see where see where it falls out. Do you think that's going to happen? I mean, if he wants to be back and you guys want him back, I mean, would you not want him back? But he wants to still play. And you guys he want, he want wants to, to still play. He wants to still play. You know, and, and uh, I want him to play. And, and I, want him, I want him to be an eagle. You know, um, it's just, I'm not going to, he's a veteran player. Um, let him spend time with his family. You know, he's one of those guys, I mean, you've seen what he's done in the last couple off seasons. He's, he's not, he hasn't been here. You know, he spends time with the family. He comes in from time to time. You know, and and I'm not concerned about Darren Sproles, you know, uh, going forward. I just know the way he the way he works, the way he trains, the way he gets himself prepared, and you know, if uh, if and when he he uh, he decides to, to to sign and come back, come on, if we're ready for him. Would Brent Selleck be a consideration in that regard too? I mean, obviously he just released him, but if he you know didn't find another team, you can bring him back at a you know much lower salary. Yeah, I mean if you're in that if you're in that position, I think I think that's a, a player that that uh, gosh you would again yeah you 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 would consider you know bring him bring him back, um, especially if, if uh, you know you, you weren't able to fit all the pieces together at that spot. So yeah, he's definitely definitely still in the conversation. You see Sidney Jones as kind of being a guy coming in, you know, starting on the outside corner. Yeah, again, he's another one that's gonna. This will be a big off season for him. You know, um, it creates competition, creates depth. You know, whether whether he whether he ends up being a starter or not is, is up to him and how he performs. But um, you know, right now it's just a matter of him competing and and uh, you know showing us what he can do. You want, I mean, your aggressive list last season on fourth down. Um, it's easy to do that when you're converting. You won a Super Bowl <laughs> pretty much as a result of it. But when it's not going well, like when you're not converting those, uh, how, how easy or difficult is it to kind of tune out the outside noise and continue to be aggressive even when it's maybe even when you're not converting? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's each week is a little different mindset for me. You know, we, we I look at a bunch of numbers and analytics and, and and, and want to find out, you know, how well one we're performing on fourth down, but how well the defense is performing, you know, on fourth down. If they're, if it's a stout defense, maybe, it, maybe you don't go for, you know, go for it as much. But listen, if you're struggling in that area, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna force the issue. You know, I'm gonna make sure that still the decisions are gonna be, they're gonna be smart decisions, gonna be best for the football team, and they're still gonna be the best ones that, that help us win the game. So. Um, you know, as, as we've talked before, a lot of it's feel, you know, game situation, clock, field position, all that. Um, but, but again, I'm not going to force any, any kind of Doug, how much there. do you work on the offense, actually, at this point? I mean, 
me, but grow because you got you got a new OC that you have to work with and a new a new quarterbacks coach. That's all we do in the mornings. We spend all our time on the offense right now. Um, we're still working through our scheme. Um, you know, I got two new offensive coaches in, in Gunnar Brewer and, and yeah. Carson Walsh, and you know, getting getting Press Taylor, you know, comfortable in his new role and Mike in his new role. So, yeah, we're we're we're, we're cranking through the offense still. Um, Can you tell now. us why you hired uh, Gunnar? Well, I, I interviewed several several people, um, and and just felt real comfortable with Gunner. Um, you know, he coached Mac at North Carolina. He, he right away spoke our language, how we teach, how we uh, uh, how we detail things. He's, he's a fundamentalist. He's a teacher, uh, which is which is big for me. And um, you know, he, he he loves the game. He loves the grind. So it was a great fit. How big a role did Mac play in your decision to hire him? He did. He did. What, uh, what made Press ready for, for this job? I just think he's he's been one of those coaches that that I've had my eye on now the last couple of years, and, and, and of course he's been he's been here for five years, and and uh, been a former quarterback. He's been around the receiver room. He's been around the quarterback room. He's smart. Uh, what he does for us, what he did for us the last two years, you know, offensively from a sort of a behind the scenes. Um, Oh, we call it we call it a DNA report, which is the DNA of our opponent, and and he puts that together, and, and it's well thought out. It's it's there's some analytics on there, some numbers on there. Um, smart guy, real smart guy. Um, got some great ideas, and and just he's ready. You know, he's ready to ready to take that spot. And uh, the quarterbacks, you know, he, he he worked well with them the first year. You know, the, the with uh, D. Filippo. Um, and, and so I'm very comfortable, you know, with him leading that room. Doug, what is uh, Carson doing in, in his rehab that makes him ahead of schedule? Well, one that he, number one, he's, he's in there every day, you know, and, and he's he's in the weight room. He's getting his, getting his getting his rehab in. You know, the things the things that I see when I'm when I'm there, or the things I hear, um, you know, he's been able to. He's been able to get in the pool, you know, and, and do do some walking and, and just just continuing on his on his path, you know. And, and um, like I said, it's 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 encouraging right now. Really, with all the guys. I mean, Jason Peters and Jordan Hicks are in there, and Chris Maragos is in there, and you know, Carson's right in there with them. And um, you know, they're they're all doing all doing really well. Um, and they're, they're, it, it's fun because it's you know they're pushing each other a little bit. You know, it's a little bit of a competition with them and see who. See who can do what today, type thing. So uh, I'm encouraged by that. Doug, you obviously being around the coaches, you talk to them. Do you think you changed any of their thinking on the aggressiveness on fourth down? Did they said anything to you? You know, they they haven't really mentioned that. Um, well, I heard otherwise. I've heard. I heard one coach came to you at a bar. And just... Yeah, but it wasn't about fourth downs. I mean, it was it was other things, but. Oh. Um, and it was a restaurant, it wasn't a bar. <laughs> um, what I do hear, uh, you know, and, and listen, it happens every year. You know, whoever wins the, the, the big game, they're going to look at what made you successful. Um, we do that, you know. Um, we do that with New England. We do that with Atlanta. We do that with Green Bay. We do that with the teams that, that make it there. So I know teams are studying our offense. Um, to try to figure out some of the things we were doing, you know, whether it was RPO or play action pass and all that, and you know, they're trying to try to figure that that kind of stuff out. But um, you know, the only two guys that I know right now that that want to maintain the aggressiveness are Frank Reich and John D. Filippo are the only two guys. What about the, what about the uh, what about the uh, the, the way uh, you guys use analytics though? Is that has that been something that you spoke to other coaches? No, I mean it, it, gets, it gets brought up. It gets brought up a lot in in these meetings, you know, yeah, uh, this right. week. Um, how teams how teams kind of use it, and and I think every team is a little different. Um, the, the coaches that that do speak up or the ones I talk to, you know, it's it's based on what what information do they want? You know, um, there's a lot of data and a lot of information out there, and, and it's it's you have to kind of kind of swim through it to get to get what you want, you know, and, and that's that's different for every team, different for every coach. What about also the, the fact that you have the analytics guys in, the, in your head, though, during the course of the game? That's, 
that's uh, that's a little bit different. That that's a little different. I think that I think that uh, is a little surprising to some of the guys. Um, but but that's again that's that's the way I, I set set ours up. And you know again everybody's different. But um, there might be you know there might be a coach or two that, that might try something like that. Was that was that your your idea initially to have the analytics in your ear? Or did, did Jeffrey mention something that hey let's try this or have that get started? No. Um, you know, those are those are things that uh, that I that I wanted. I wanted you know to take as much. I, I didn't want anybody to guess. You know, I don't I don't prefer guessing on anything. Um, I want things to be kind of concrete. Now I've got to make the final decision, obviously, but I want I just want the information. They're not making the decision for me. I want the information, and then I make the decision. So um, it's good to have that. I know training camp is, is some kind of way, but we we'll be planning now. As, as far as Carson, how is, are you going to work him back in when he is ready to play? Because you obviously need to prepare Nick in case Carson doesn't get full clearance. Right. Um, when we get to that point, you know, with Carson, where we can cut him loose, um, it'll be it'll be a slow process. You know, we'll we'll make sure he's um, one. There's going to be. There's going to be probably a period of, of him just getting back into into, into quarterback shape, let's say, um, moving around in the pocket, um, you know, guys kind of falling around his legs, things of that nature. Just just getting that comfort back. But but seven on sevens, individual work um, are things that I'm I'm just kind of processing through right now, and then and then slowly building, you know. Through, if he's available for games or whatever, you know, just kind of build that slowly. I, I don't necessarily need him in preseason. You know, I need him ready for for week one. Um, and does he need preseason? I, I think he can. I think I think he can get the work done in practice. Quite honestly, he did it his first year. Yeah. You know, um, and and so you know, we'll see. We'll see where it's at when we get there. It's it's hard to speculate on that. Um, but I just know Carson and how well he's going to work and prepare and, and, and put himself in a position to, to be so He doesn't want to go out there and, and not be ready. Going back to um, your... Can I ask, like, um, so when you say that he's ahead of schedule and everything, like, is that a point I'm encouraged by his progress. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, but I think the word you used was ahead of schedule. When? When did I use that? But, like, is that, like, Over a the schedule? weekend with, with NFL Network. Oh, I saw. Okay, <laughs> second hand. You're hearing it. You're hearing it second hand. I got it. I got it. So is that like a schedule to return in X amount of months? I mean, or is that just benchmarks? Along it's just benchmarks. It's just benchmarks of, of of him sort of checking the boxes along his along the the, the, the rehab process, basically. But like the boxes are they like you know what I'm saying? Like are they for a certain schedule like how does no we're not we don't put a time we don't put a timetable on it that's the thing um, get with, used to with injuries with injuries like this <laughs> not putting a time to, it's like Sydney's deal we weren't putting a timetable on that either you know we're we'll put him out there when he's ready when Carson going back to um, uh, you know the, having somebody in, in your ear during the game during game time decisions Ryan was already with the team when you were hired so what went into uh, the decision to make him that guy, and what did you see in him? You know, my first year, he he did a lot of uh, sort of behind the scenes reports for me, um, different off season projects, um, some studies that I had him do in, in certain situations, and we just kind of built built that rapport leading up into the into the into the regular season, and then we just kind of grew that relationship. Over last off season, and and I got more specific in in some of the uh, areas of football, the you know the two point conversions, the the fourth downs, um, you know even even you know field position on on field goals and and timeouts and all that kind of stuff. We just kind of began to put all that together a year ago, uh, leading up into the season, and and. Um, you know, even though he kind of helps the defensive side a little bit, um, I still wanted him to maintain that that uh, um, that role uh, in the box for me. So Doug, they kind you kind of like progress naturally. You didn't like interview. No, no, it was just a natural, natural progression, and and uh, I sort of gravitated right to him, and 
and uh, some of the things that he was presenting, you know, I was I was intrigued by, and um, it just it just naturally worked out that way. Doug, did you do any legwork on uh, whether Bennett would fit in the locker room for you guys training for him? You personally? Um, I mean, you're going to try to do your due diligence a little bit, you know, on guys. I mean, that's, that's all part of the process. Um, you know, I wasn't initially involved in a lot of the conversation early on, you know, um, but, you know, I had a chance to talk to him and, and, uh, and sit down with him and, and visit when he came in the building. But, you know, initially, initially not a, not a ton of does light work early. Does that, or do you just say, you know what, I, give me, I'll make it, I'll make it work. I, I have a good locker room. I understand that I can, I can take in the, on the I can take any, take on anything. I'm not saying Bennett's a, a problem guy, but he comes from a different environment, a different culture. Do you feel like you can just take on anybody and it'll work? Well, we did Jay, yeah, we did right. Garrett, yeah. took them on, and they were fine. So, um, listen, anytime, anytime you're going after a, a, a veteran free agent that comes from a different environment, there's there's going to be something. He's not a rookie. He's a veteran player. He he can speak his mind. You know, um, that, that's that's going to be part of it. You know, but. Um, I think, I think, and I do believe that your culture that you've established and the guys that you currently have in your locker room, you know, a great example would be guys like Lee Garrett. And we all heard the stories with him before we got him and Jay Ajayi before we got him. And, you know, uh, now both those guys are, they're, they're tremendous guys, they're great team players, locker room guys, great leaders on the team and helps us win a championship. So, last, going back to kind of your methods, last year the offseason you had the, Competition game with this locker room. A, do you want to bring that back again? And then, what, what do you think that? What kind of role does that play in building chemistry? As you look back on, I do want to. I do want to continue the the competition. Um, you know, in the in the locker room, in the locker room, whether it be the weight room or on the field. You know, when we can get on the field in phase two, keep that competition alive. Um, you know, I, I just think it builds it builds a little team chemistry. I, we talked about that earlier. You know, and, and putting all that together, that's kind of where it starts. You know, you're you're kind of you're kind of feeling out your team again one more time, and 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 you, you find out who your leaders are again, and uh, it, it just it, it 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 just sort of starts galvanizing your team at that time. When you start up with OTAs, when you start up with OTAs, really short off season for your veterans. Do you expect people to kind of you know, take a little time off this year? It's a fine line. Um, you know, with you know, when we left back in February, I encouraged everybody that you know that was going to be a concern. You know, and that's when I talk about the other side of success. That's what I talk about: guys not showing up for OTAs, guys not showing up for your off-season program, thinking they've arrived. And I don't think we have that kind of group. Um, it is hard when you can't communicate with them. You know, in the off-season. Um, but just physically, it's going to be tough for a lot well, of Well, and, and I can I can be smart on how who practices and, and, and who who does you know who doesn't. So um, I think that's part of me understanding the team and the roster. And 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 again, nobody makes a team in the spring, right? Um, it, it's kind of turning into a you know a really a really good developmental program. Uh, you know, my mindset is. Is we've got some young guys on this roster that we got to continue to to improve and get them caught up, and this will be a good opportunity for those guys. As you as you uh, started reinstalling the offense, you guys you say every morning you're spending uh, how many hours you spend on it? We start at 8:30 in the morning, run to about noon, to 12:30. You know, about four hours a day. Um, there are times where we double dip and come back in the afternoon. Um, but right now, too, we got coaches on the do, road, so do you factor hard. in like the, like okay? This is the Carson we're going to get back. This is how we should start styling. We don't uh, because he, yeah. he's going to be limited physically. Yeah, but we don't. I don't look at it from a, yeah. I don't look at it from this, a personnel standpoint as much as I do a scheme standpoint. You know what I'm saying? Right. Okay. How do we make the offense better? Um, that that's what we look at it as. It's not about putting. Get, it, now's not the time to you know create packages and right. you know who's going to be where. Um, Now's the time to go back and just make subtle changes in your offense or, or remove stuff that you only ran once or, you know, how do we make this play a little bit better from a 
a route standpoint. That that's what this time of the year is for. When do you have the conversation with Carson about how he's going to play when he comes back? And do you at all, actually? I haven't. No, I haven't. Do you um, want him to? Play I mean, we're, we're going to we'll cross that bridge at some point. You know, maybe one of those conversations he and I will have. Um, Probably later in the spring, as we get closer to camp. But you will, you will say. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit down and, and, and talk to him, and, and you know, just, just, you know, longevity is everything in this business. You know, I mean, learn from the best, learn from, learn from Tom Brady. You know, who got hurt early in his career, and learn from guys that, that have done that. You know, and, and, and yet still went on to have great careers and long careers, and and uh, you know, longevity is everything in this business. You know, and. and and that's something that we all have to, I mean, even coaches have to understand with our own with our own health, you know, um, is making sure that we're, we're taking care of ourselves. How difficult do you think it's going to be for him to kind of have to learn how to play without maybe that mobility when he comes back? Yeah, and, and, and you know, I don't know. I, it's hard to answer that, you know. Um, I, I, think, I think maybe initially, but look, I mean, we'll see. It's, it's just, you know, we're, we're speculating on something that's still months away, um, and you know, I don't know. We'll see. I know all the defensive ends. Keeps getting bigger and more successful. What's that mean? Is he the game? What was the last part? What does it mean to be in that coach's kit? Do you think maybe Andy doesn't get enough? Um. You know, I, I yeah, I, I don't, I don't think he gets enough credit. Obviously, um, you know, goes all the way back to 1999 with, you know, the guys now and a lot of these guys in this room, you know, uh, that that coach under him, for him, you know, and and then, you know, myself, Matt Nagy, you know, currently Sean McDermott, you know, guys like that that have been hired in the last couple of years that uh, is also part of that. So, um, you know, he he's he he definitely is. He knows how to pick them, I guess, you know. Um, but the one thing he does a great job of and what I'm appreciative of is how well he, he coaches us as coaches, you know, and that's part of part of my philosophy is how now taking a guy like Press Taylor and coaching him, you know, and getting him prepared or, you know, a Mike Rowe, getting him, getting him prepared, you know, and just keep coaching your guys um, to, to one day maybe be in this, this same, same position. I know all the defensive end play, but are you looking at Derek Barnett as that starter on Vinny's side, or do you want Mike Bennett to take that role? Are you that? Yeah, you know, I think I think going into it, um, I, 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 there's some. I mean, you think about it. You got BG, Michael Bennett, Derek, and Chris. Those are four D ends. You any of them can go out there and try it out there. And the one thing about Michael, what I like is. Now you get in a position where he can, he can move down inside, play a three technique, or you know play a shade, and he can play that tackle position, you know, and, and, and on third down or something like that. So um, again, this is springtime is really not the time to who's going to be one, two, or three. It, it, everybody's kind of out there working, and um, we get later into camp is when we'll we'll start putting our packages together on defense and offense, and and trying to figure all that out. You know, Derek's a young player. He's got a talented guy, uh, got a bright future. Michael, obviously, is a proven uh, DN, D tackle, and and uh, makes us better. BG said that he wants a new contract. He doesn't have one yet. Do you think you'll see him in the spring? I hope so. I, mean, I hope to see him. I know you don't interject yourself much into that end of it. But yeah, I, I don't. I mean, I, Do you want him to get his contract? Well, I mean, I think any player, you know, of his caliber, um, yeah, I'm excited for players to get get what they can, you know. Um, uh, but you know, those are all all questions that I kind of push to the the even Howie we, the Howie department. Even when he doesn't show for this, I'm not saying he's not showing for the spring, but let's say he does show for the spring, then do you, then do you go across the hall and say, hey, I want I want to get my player here. I I need him. Well, we all know we want him. You know, okay. I mean, that's that's not that's a given. I mean, that's not. We'll do everything we can, but. You know, yeah, that's one of those down the hall questions. Doug, what, are you, Doug, what are some of the things that you know now with even his conviction that you believe in now that you might not have now entering his first year head coach and now even a Super Bowl winning coach? 
for me, I think the biggest the biggest thing that I took away from last year, uh, and it's 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 big, is is, is a trust factor with my players, <clears throat> um, them trusting me, putting them in good positions during games, kind of goes back to your fourth down question, and then me trusting them with with play design, play call, offensively, um, defensively, you know, trusting those guys. If I do elect to go for it on fourth down, I'm going to trust my defense if, if we don't make it. I think that was the biggest the biggest reality for me that you, you can, you got to believe in your guys, you know, um, in order to get that done. And I think that was the biggest takeaway for me. You, you is, it, is, there, is it a difference at these meetings this year as a Super Bowl winning coach entering last year's person. Do you feel it? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. You, you're 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 viewed differently. Um, you know, um, everybody everybody is very complimentary, appreciative. Um, you know, I think there were a lot of people pulling for us. You know, to win. Um, so yeah, you're you're looked at now. You're a Super Bowl champion, and you know that's as crazy as that sounds. I mean, it's, it's still hard to fathom. You know, it's hard to kind of put it in perspective. You right. mentioned you mentioned other teams kind of studying your offense a little bit. Where do you look to study and see new wrinkles? You go to the college game, or are you looking at other NFL teams? What's your process? For you? We're always looking um, as we study these college kids. You know, we're always looking at the college world a little bit. So we'll we'll pull some stuff from there. Um, and then we just break it down by, by situation. Who's the best third down offense? You know, who's the best red zone offense? Um, you know, who's the best short yardage goal line offense? So we just kind of, kind of pick a couple and, and, and kind of study them and see, see if there's anything unusual that they did or, you know, maybe a formation or a personnel group, something that might uh, might benefit us and, and see if we can. Somehow incorporated into our into our system. So without, getting any, without getting specific to the players on your roster, what are some traits you like from the nickel corner as opposed to outside? Like, what do you think makes guy be able to go inside and play that position? One, you got to have a you know your change of direction, your short area quickness. Um, you don't necessarily have to have the long speed in there. Uh, you got to be tough as nails. You know, um, you got to be able to stick your nose in there and make a tackle. You're you're basically a you're, you're a smaller linebacker, you know, that can run, a little more athleticism. I think that's something that Patrick Robinson, as the year went, got better and better and better at, you know, um, making plays around the box, tackling, um, and still being able to, to defend, you know, those short, quicker, twitchier receivers um, that we have in our division. You know, he was able to do that. And um, those are things we look for, you know, in, 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 in and having that, having that, and you got to be smart. I mean, you got to be a, you got to be a thinker on your feet. You got to be able to process information because you're constantly corners are different because they're kind of on the island. You know, they're out there. You know, it's either man or zone for them. I mean, it's 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 a different deal. But inside, you're communicating with linebackers. You're communicating with DNs. You're communicating with safeties. So you got to have a little bit of that, as Jim calls it, that high speed internet. You know, to be able to process and be be on your feet. If you can speak your offense. Will you leave Philly Philly in the offense? Do you think you'll ever call that again in your career? No, there's no way you call that again. It, it, it's it's out there. I mean, it, it, anytime your quarterback does that, it's over. Now, <laughs> not saying you couldn't do that and run something else. You know, you could do something else off it, but but for the most part, I mean, that, you're probably not going to see it this year. So game it game one, he calls it. Game one, yeah, he calls yeah. it. So is it fair to say then that? On the record, that Philly Philly's dead, <laughs> retired rather. I would say it's more on the back burner, maybe retired, but uh, he hasn't put in his papers yet. Brett Favre, Brett Favre retired, and then and then come, and then come, come back, back. Yeah. and then come back, yeah. and then retire yeah. again, and then come back. There you go. Yeah, that makes more sense. If people view you differently this year and they're complimentary, what were they last year? <laughs> Not very complimentary. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's hard. I mean, you were, you know, fourth in the division, obviously. You know, to first in the division. And, um, you know, it, it, it's 
because last year we were we were you know we were looking at the Cowboys. I mean they were they were first in our division last year going to the postseason and and uh, um, it, it's just it, it is what it is. It comes with the territory. I mean who knows? It, 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 hopefully it's us again this year. You know um, maybe not, but we'll see. Um, but there's a lot of respect in this room for everybody. Everybody understands the hard work that it takes to, to, to win a game in this in this league, um, let alone 13. So, when you look back at the regular season, were there any games that you kind of felt prepared to prepared, prepared your team like for the playoffs? As in, like they were kind of like character wins, like regular season wins or losses or whatever. You know, I think there was a stretch in there. You know, we played like Arizona, we played San Fran, I can't remember the order. We had Arizona, Chicago, San Fran, Denver. You know, there was a stretch in there where we smoked those teams. Teams, we beat them pretty good. Um, and you kept hearing the comment like, oh, it's too easy. What do you mean it's too easy? I mean, it, it, nothing's ever easy, you know? Um, but really, that stretch of games, and, you know, we had Denver, I think we had our bye, I think. Um, and you score 51 points at that point. I mean, you, you feel like at that point, you're rolling, you know? You're rolling, and you really, you really want to keep it rolling, you know? Um, and then, of course, that, that stretch of three road games late in the year, that was a big test for us. You know, the Seattle, the Rams, and the Giants, that was a that was a big, big test for our football team. But I think those early games prepared us for those down the stretch games. And we, we really started to peak. We really started to peak at the right time and play our best football down the stretch, which I'm okay if we, you know, you see teams start slow and you, you build towards the end of the year. That's okay as long as you're there at the end of the year. You know, that's that's the biggest thing. Doug, you had mentioned how good of a teammate with Carson he was when he went down, how good he was to Nick. He's, he's also human. Is there a moment maybe that sticks out to you where he was really going through it that you shared with him or maybe helped him? With Nick? No, but, but Carson after he went down. You know, there, there really wasn't, and the only reason I say that, and that's not, that's not to talk bad or anything like that. It's just you just don't have time. You know, you don't have time because everything now went focus was on Nick. Now let's get Nick ready to go. You know, so I really didn't have that that one on one with Carson. You know, because one, he was he was now doing his starting his rehab. He was in the quarterback room, and then he would go. You know, and and. Uh, so we really just didn't get that opportunity. So are you going with Cameron Johnson as your punter, or do you think he was bringing like a legitimate competition for him? I think I think there's a chance we, we bring in a, another guy. You know, um, competition's good at that spot too. You know, so yeah, there's a chance. But that, that when you were talking about that stretch, uh, you know, when you went out to Seattle and LA, and are you a big believer in that one thing has to happen? If the dominoes really start falling after that LA game, in that LA game, you lose Carson. Win the game anyway, and you keep, keep clinching one. To yeah. The game you, you know, could things have maybe unfolded differently if you don't win that that game? It could have. You know, it could have. Um, you know, the Rams game, but more so the Giants game. You know, I mean, we were in, we were in a shootout in the Giants game. You know, Nick Nick four touchdown passes, and I mean Eli was up and down the field. I mean it was a little bit of a battle. You know, but we. We figured out how to win, you know. Um, but I looked more at that Giants game, and if we don't win that one, because we were still fighting for a lot of things, you know, home field advantage, you know, get the buy, the whole the whole deal. Um, so that game, that game to me, was probably more so than the Rams game. Could have could have turned things differently, maybe towards the end of the season. Is there a now player on the roster the... that you think can be like this year's uh, Nelson Aguilar and that um, kind of takes the next step? Either side of the ball. Well, I think 
I think Sidney Jones has a chance. You know, see how his development this spring. I think Mac Hollins has a chance to see where he goes this spring. Um, we know what Derek's going to be. I look at I look at even some of the young receivers. I think Greg Ward, Rashard Davis, Bryce Treggs, Shelton Gibson. I look at all that whole that whole group right there. Um, one of those guys, I know they'll emerge, you know, and, and do something special. Doug, with the, with the hours you guys put in, what is your advice to coaches in terms of trying to maintain some kind of family life, you know, sleeping, sleeping or not sleeping in the office, uh, attending their kids' events? What do you tell them in that respect, especially during the season? Well, during the offseason now, you know, they're out of the office this week because of the meetings and everything that's going on. and and listen, we only get one opportunity to do what we do, but we're not gonna, you know, I'm a big believer, we're not gonna sacrifice our families for, for anything, you know. Um, families, family comes first, and I wanna make sure that they're a part of that, and um, spring break for kids is an important time. Families travel, you know, and, and do things as a family, and I, I think it's important. You know, we know in season's in season, and there's not much time. Um, I also want the, you know, I want them to bring their families around, you know, practice, training camp. You know, if they've got older boys, bring them. If they've got older daughters, bring them. Bring them, get them, get them involved, you know, get them, get them out there. Hang out with dad for a day, you know. Um, my boys do it. You know, you see my boys on the sidelines during games, and um, I just think it's too important. Doug, I know he's not with the team anymore, but Vinnie Curry, what did you like about him playing for your defense morning? Well, who's his attributes that you liked about him? Well, one, he, he, he's kind of a speed to power guy. Um, he, he did an outstanding job for us this year, um, just being able to rush the passer. You know, we drafted him several years ago, and, and just every year he got better and better and better and made a big impact on our D line um, last year. You know, we, we rotate so much, got so many guys that, that uh, you know, he really assumed his role, and um, whether it was on third down, he could move inside, you know, and play a tackle position if we needed to. Uh, play outside, um, and, and just his his, uh, his his knack for the ball. You know that was that, that really made him a, a real good player for us last year. Like what point. made you guys uh, kind of willing to part ways with Torrey Smith? You know there was even some speculation made that uh, he might have been cut if uh, had he stayed. In the yeah, you know, it, 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 listen, there's 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 tough decisions to be made all over your roster, um, and he was one of them. And, uh, you know, what he did for us, I'll, I'll thank him every single day for helping us win a championship last year. And a uh, great, great teammate, great leader in the room, leader in the locker room, in the community. Um, and it's hard to part ways with guys like that, you know. But, but sometimes, sometimes you do. Sometimes there's, you know, you got to add value somewhere. And, and so, you know, you make, you make tough decisions uh, that way. And, uh, you know. We were fortunate to, to have him for a year, but, but we made the move and, and, and got, a, got a defensive back that we, we needed. We needed some help there, um, and, and obviously wish him the best. Does Torrey still have what you would consider top end speed? I yes. know he's doing kind of a little bit more yes. horizontal stuff with you guys. Yeah, and that may have been scheme related. Some of it's scheme related, but I do believe he can still run. Uh, he can stretch the field for us. He did it in the postseason. Uh, he did it really a couple times throughout the year, so I, I do believe he can still do that. Another guy you guys parted with was uh, Lagarde Blunt. How, how big was he for you? Um, oh, he was huge for season. us. Yeah, huge. You know, he's a Super Bowl winner where he's been, and um, he came in and, and uh, he, he really he really gelled with the room, the running back room. Um, you know, he was in our offseason program right away, and and really wanted to sort of solidify that. We and we wanted that that bigger back at the time, and got him in there and. Um, did some outstanding things for him. Again, he was another one that that was able to kind of lead a, a younger group of guys, you know, running backs that uh, helped us win that championship. Yeah. What does he have left? What sort of players? I think I think he, they're getting they're getting a big physical guy. You know, they're getting a guy that, that still has quite a bit left in the tank. You know, and you know, it just it just the way our situation is right now is just a little bit harder. You know, to keep keep that many guys. 
Um, just we got some young, young players that we like, but um, yeah, they're getting a, they're getting a dynamic back, a good guy. So changing gears, what what are the Redskins doing now? Oh my gosh, we don't have time. <laughs> I got time. I need to know where I'm getting here. I got six minutes. Um, <laughs> Number one, they're getting a great person. They're getting a great human being. Um, they're they're getting a guy that doesn't get enough credit for what he's accomplished in his career. They're getting a great leader. Um, they're getting a great teacher. They're getting a guy that's he's going to give them 110 percent of Alex Smith, and, you know, and that's that's going above and beyond. He's smart. He's going to make he's going to make tremendous decisions for that for that team. He doesn't turn the ball over. Um, and you just look at his his body of work and what he's what he's done. You know, he, he helped he helped San Francisco, you know, get to get to the Super Bowl. He helped Kansas City get to the postseason. You know, his, his track record speaks for itself. So why doesn't um, he get the credit? I think they've always, you know, the media, the, the outside, you know, people that talk, they they've labeled him as a as a game manager. You know, what what does that mean? I mean. He makes he makes great decisions. He doesn't turn the ball over. If that's managing the game, then I'll take it every day. What did you see in the meeting rooms? I saw him. I saw him lead by example. I saw him <laughs> study and come into the building on Mondays and Tuesdays on his days off, prepare for the next week. Um, he wanted to be coached. Uh, he wants to learn, even at his at his age. You know, was he 10, 11? 11 years in, 12 11, years yeah, in, yeah, yeah. So he, he's a guy that wants to wants to learn. He, he's constantly learning the game, and they're getting a they're getting a, they're getting a, to my opinion they're getting a great quarterback. Even at his his age. Oh heck yeah, heck he's better now. It's like fine wine. <laughs> you get better with age. D D yeah. Doug, in the Super Bowl, you guys hit on that mesh and the, the wheel, I think, five or five or six different times. Why was that so effective? And is that a comfort play for Nick going back to his days with Chip and his first time with the Eagles? We had, um, we had, we had nine, nine of those plays in the game plan in the Super Bowl. Nine different formations, same play, like nine different ways. I think we ended up calling it like four times or five times in the game, but that was actually a play that Sam Bradford brought to us that he ran with Chip Kelly's offense. So that's where the play came from. I I had never seen. We ran. I I come from. We ran a version of it, but I like this version better. Um, and Sam brought it to my attention, and uh, we put it in our first year. They probably didn't call it as much. Um, our quarterbacks really like the play, and um, you know it's it's not a play that's in every week because of the, the structure of the defense. But but um, we just so happen to have several of them in, you know, in the Super Bowl. What was different about this version? Was it the, the wheel routes? Uh, with the back that's or? that's that's a, the the wheel part of it's the primary, you know. But then but then the mesh part of it becomes the secondary read for the quarterback. So he can really go anywhere anywhere with the ball. Doug, have you watched the Super Bowl? Uh, I have, a couple the times. Game, yes, game? the whole game. What was the experience like? I was nervous. <laughs> it's one of those deals where, even though you know the outcome, you know, you're still like, you get those tense moments. You know, like you're right back in the game, and um, it, it, it's fun to go back and watch and listen to the commentary, and you know, kind of as a fan, listening to it, uh, and, and it's. To see yourself on TV like that in that game is, is first of all, it's weird, but um, I, I mean, it's, it's it's special. It's very special. What's the, the, what's the coolest congratulations you've gotten from anyone? You know, I'd have to say the um, you know the Morristown Day. Uh, you know, because you get a lot of. Congratulations, text messages, phone calls, all that. Those are all pretty normal. But just that deal in Morristown, put that together, and that, you know the proclamation, the Doug Peterson Day, February 24th, which you're all invited to. Um, you know that that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. You know to, to have that, and, and uh, even my hometown in Ferndale, Washington, 
Um, they did the same thing, you know. Uh, they sent they sent a nice little proclamation, and, and uh, those, those are pretty cool. Those are special. What's going to happen on Doug Peterson Day going forward? I don't know yet. <laughs> I've never had a day, you know. <laughs> never had a, like a day named after you or whatever. So I don't know. You're gonna have I'm taking suggestions. Yeah, it depends. depends. I might be just. <laughs> yeah. What a Super Bowl. Well, having a team of guys who are extremely socially conscious, active in the community, did that create any additional work for you as a head coach? Or did those guys basically just keep their professionalism on the field and just manage themselves in the field? You know, they, they, were able to, they were able to keep the two separate. You know, I, I encouraged our team to, to get involved where and when they can. And, and we had some great, you know, activists, and, and Malcolm Jenkins, Chris Long, Torrey Smith. You know, and, and we had some other guys that kind of got involved in, in, in their causes. But I think that's something that our players have really embraced. Um, and and they've, they've kind of taken it to the next level, and, and they're, 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 they're actively pursuing, you know, um, their causes. And, 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 and I'm, a big, I'm a big supporter of that. And, and, and as long as it doesn't interfere, you know, with their job on the field, you know, you gotta you gotta separate the two, obviously, and they do a great job with that, and, and uh, you know that's something that I'll continue to encourage. You lost Vinnie Curry and Bo Allen in the free agency. What are Bucks gonna be getting in those two guys? I mean, they're, you know, the thing is with both of them, they're get, they're getting two great human beings. Number one, it starts with that. Um, you know, Vinny Vinny's Vinny's a tremendous defensive end. I, I was on Andy Reid's staff when we drafted him. Um, Speed to power guy, you know, uh, knows he, has, he, he can play inside, he can play outside. He's got position versatility there with him. You know, Bo's a, Bo's a big physical guy that can push the pocket. He's a great run stopper. Um, and he's going to add, both of those guys are going to add some great depth and competition to that, that D line room. And, and uh, you know, um, I'm, I'm excited to kind of continue to watch their, their, their uh, careers. And Vinny, I know Last you, one, you guys usually use him first and second down, but I mean, is he a guy that you? Another team, again, maybe it's the product of what a great rotation you guys had. Is he a guy that can play all three Yes, he can. Yes, he can. And it's just, it's just the way Jim runs his D-line, you know, uh, the way we do it. We, we rotate a lot of guys, you know. I think we had three guys that got 65% of the total snaps the entire year, where some teams get, you know, 75, 80, 85% of the snaps. So, you know. Even a Brandon Graham, as good as he is, Fletcher Cox, are only getting 65% of the plays. So, um, but I do believe Vinny can, can play all through, all through that. Yeah. Doug, Doug Peters, oh, Philadelphia. Oh, we're done. Yeah. Why should a mom in Dubuque, Iowa, allow her son to play football?